Did top Arizona Republican officials try and bribe former gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake to stay out of the upcoming Senate race? Newly, newly released secretly recorded audio sure seems to suggest as much. The tape appears to be a conversation between Lake and Arizona GOP chair Jeff DeWitt, where DeWitt asks if there's an amount of money he could give to Lake or he could get for Lake in order for her to drop out. Take a listen. Is there a number at which... I can be bought. <laughs> Not be bought. That's what it's about. You can take a pause for a couple of years. No. And then go right back to what you're doing. Mm -mm. No. 10 million, 20 million, 30, no, no, no. A billion, no. This is not about money. This is about our country. Now, while the alleged bribe is interesting enough, DeWitt seems to imply that if it was revealed, he tried to bribe Lake out of the race, he would be assassinated? I think you should go public with this and then no, say, hey, no, 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 no. these Jeff people Trevor. don't want to, they don't want, they I turn my key in my car and I just, <laughs> I don't know. I like my car. <laughs> tell them I'm not flattered. I'm offended that they. Don't tell anybody that we had this conversation. I'm offended that they um, don't care about our country more. I actually wish you'd just give me a counter offer this big. <laughs> give me a counter. I can't, I can't be bought. Come on. I can't. All right, I'll see. Okay, bye-bye. Following that tape's viral spread on X, DeWitt has resigned from his position, suggested he might take legal action against Carrie Lake. Lake decided to make hay while the sun shines and use the opportunity to ask for funds. She wrote on X, I can't be bribed. I can't be bought. I'm only in this for my children in the state of Arizona. So this is pretty wild. <laughs> um, again, we're, you know, we're using careful language, alleged, et cetera, but I've listened to the tape. He, he's resigned um, and basically said, well, I'm resigning because I don't want Carrie Lake to release even more damaging footage she has, so please leave me alone. I'm going back to the private sector. Bye. That's basically what he said in his statement. Mm -hmm. So this is essentially acknowledged and confirmed is what I'm saying by the parties involved. That, that, I, mean, that, I mean, you heard it there. He, he was very clearly offering her money. I, I guess from, I, I can't imagine from his personal funds, but I guess from the RNC. So I, I think... I think Republicans, Lake supporters, and, and maybe just even Republicans who aren't supportive of Lake necessarily, should be, will, I don't know, should be outraged that they tried to do this. Well, I, 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 I was trying to understand the implication that he was going to be blown up in his car mafia style. Um, I, yeah, no, I think he was saying he would be blown up by, he, he knows it would be so um, damn it, so bad for him. People would be so angry that... Um, that this rhino tried to take out the candidate they want. Right. I, I guess I was yeah. trying to read into that as maybe the money is from a more nefarious source. Oh, I don't. Well, I mean, I, may, I, don't, I, don't, I, I just don't understand why you would allude to like a like a like an organized yeah. crime hit yeah. in, in the middle of all of that. If it's more that, that the, uh, a, a MAGA mob <laughs> would uh, storm his house like it was the Capitol or something. <laughs> well, what is what is the posture of uh, Carrie Lake politically right now? She's obviously using this as a fundraising opportunity. Where does she stand after her you know loss last so, year? So I mean, the reason from the RNC perspective, or from this guy's perspective, is that you know Carrie Lake narrowly lost her. Uh, gubernatorial bid in a state, you know, Arizona is a swing state. Um, went for went for Joe Biden in 2020, um, but it, you know, it had uh, pr prior to this election, Carrie Lake lost. Its incumbent governor was a Republican who had served two terms, who had been reelected, um, Doug Ducey, by like a landslide margin, extremely popular. Like, it's a state that ca absolutely can and usually does elect Republicans. Carrie Lake lost very narrowly. Blake Masters, who was the Senate candidate, he lost very narrowly. The attorney general candidate lost extreme, like by I think like hundreds of votes. Um, so that and and the perception is that they were all kind of doomed by Trump and by the very hardcore association with 2020 uh, relitigation that they all engaged in. Carrie Lake is one of the most full-throated defenders of Trump on that topic. Blake Masters put out an advertisement saying, I agree with Trump that the election was stolen, something to that effect. 
So I, I think Republicans believe they would be more competitive with a different kind of candidate, but um, the candidate is going to be Kerry Lake. And actually, Blake Masters wanted to run again for Senate, and they were going to go head to head. And um, she basically got him to back off and decide to run for the House instead. But I think I how did she do it. that? Well, I think he saw he was going to lose against her. That Trump was going to endorse her over him. So he decided to run for a House seat instead. But um, she was so annoyed with him that he even dared to momentarily face her in, in the Senate. She endorsed uh, the attorney general candidate who lost mm -hmm. is also running for that seat. So she endorsed him instead, and Trump also endorsed him. So I think uh, Blake Masters might also lose that. That's the primary. Yeah. So those are the, that's the you know, politics going on there. It's very interesting. But um, it, this is going to be the, the Kerry Lake Senate race is going to be interesting. It's going to be a three way race because this is for Kirsten Sinema's seat. She's running for re election as an independent Democrat. Uh, Ruben Gallego is the is the officially sanctioned Democratic candidate, and then there's Carrie Lake, the Republican, and this is going to be a like a real three way race mm. where it's not clear who's going to come out and on top. But they they think they would do better. Many Republicans think they would do better with anyone but Carrie Lake. Yeah, I uh, don't want this to be construed as. Uh an endorsement of what happened here in this scenario. But it does strike me as kind of interesting that even when we talk about backroom deals, this is literally what we're talking about. Yeah. And there's a little bit of, oh, shucks, how how could you in, in some of the discussion of this? That feels a little naive. I mean, what else do people think they're getting offered? When, when uh, Joe Biden and the rest of the Democratic Party stands aside for Hillary Clinton in 2016, despite her horrible poll numbers, what do we think those conversations are like? I'm not saying they're necessarily so explicitly quid pro quo. No, I'm no. Hand you oh, right. No, dollars. I think it's not that. But there is a kind of, well, this is how much I can fundraise for you if you run in four years. This is the endorsements that I can get for you if you run in four no, years. No, this is proof and, you know, you're right. This is proof and acknowledgement of what happens every day and what a lot of Republicans, this is confirming everything they think about the elites who run their party. People who say they're for Trump and, and you know, say all the, we, we love Trump and everything, but behind the scenes, would prefer anyone but a Trump or a Kerry Lake who who are privately wishing, praying to their to their gods that uh, that Trump is in fact disqualified from the ballot. And that's what that's what Republican voters worry that that's how their party feels, and every now and then it gets sure. confirmed like this. I, I don't know that it has to be that conspiratorial. I mean, Carrie Lake, even in your own telling, lost in large part because she won't stop doing Trump uh, yeah. voter trutherism, right. um, election election denialism. So it's not doesn't take a nefarious actor or someone who's secretly against Trump or secretly rooting against Trump to want. When tr if, if Trump well, wins right, the presidency, for him to actually have power they're, in Congress, they're, they're because secretly, he, he's won these votes. Yeah, they're secretly rooting against him because they don't like him, and also they think he's the the weaker candidate of the ones remaining. Of I mean, and they can point to the polling that shows Nikki Haley beating Biden by an even wider margin than Trump. So they don't like Trump, and they want to win. There, it's the same thing with a Kerry Lake. But there's two different issues here. There's the question of whether or not a party should try to influence candidates that run because it has broader national interests than right. just on any local level. Which is what they used to do. Which I, I personally still think is anti-democratic, but is much more tolerable and acceptable yeah. in, in the public sphere. And a separate question as, as, as to whether or not people should be intervening in more local races because of their personal peccadilloes and likes and dislikes. And you're seeming to put this action in the second category when Carrie Lake's own failures just last year in securing the nomination because she was an extreme representative no, no, of the no, party. No, no, it's the first seems category. To suggest it's the first. So all no, I'm no, saying no, I, is that I, I don't know that this is, oh, this is, this is confirming that everybody hates Trump and is out to get him and defeating into those kind of conspiracy narratives. I think it could very much just be Carrie Lake lost. She has vulnerabilities as a candidate because she's widely to the right of where most Republicans are on accepting that uh, Joe Biden won the election in 2020. And this is just a strategic choice that someone tried to go about um, in a really bad way. Well, sure. But I mean, she did. She, she's unpopular um, among, she turns off just another Republicans, but she ran, there was, for the gubernatorial race, there was a primary, there were like five candidates, including a bunch of more moderate ones, and she handily beat them all. So again, re the Republican electorate chose her, and the party elites are saying, we think that's a bad choice. And, and they, from, from a strategic standpoint, they're probably right. But, I mean, this is the whole, this is the whole problem the Republican Party has. What general um, election audiences are willing to, to deal with is, 
is far apart from what many Republican primary voters demand of their candidates, and this is the problem the party has found itself in in recent years. Yeah, you're right. It used to be smoke-filled. It used to not be a democratic process at all. It used to be a smoke-filled room where they'd say, uh, find me a, a moderate person from uh, from Ohio and pair them with a Southerner, and that's our ticket. Like, that's how it worked from what, 1850 to 1950. Um, but now we let the people decide. And how's that working out for us? More rising right after this.